Our next speaker, our last speaker for the day, uh, is Brian Feldman, who has been our outstanding speaker in 2007. He's professor of pediatrics and medicine at uh, the Hospital for Sick Children at the University of Toronto. He's also um, senior scientist and head of the Division of Rheumatology. Uh, he's a pediatric rheumatologist who received his MD in Ontario. Um, he is a fellow of the uh, uh, Royal College of Physicians uh, for, um, of Canada for Pediatrics and Rheumatology. He's got a ma uh, Master's of Science degree. Um, he's been co-chair of the Criteria Subcommittee of the Quality Care Committee of the uh, QOC. He's chair of the Medical Advisory Committee of the Arthritis Society, and he's going to give us a talk on new insights into dermatomyositis. Uh, thank you very much, David. It's a real pleasure for me to be back here again uh, talking about dermatomyositis at the CCR meeting. I'm just going to ask for a show of hands. Who here looks after patients with myositis? And who here looks after patients with myositis under the age of 18? So there's a few, not very many. So um, what I'm going to do today is uh, I, I want to do something a little different than the talk I gave a few years ago. I'm going to base this talk on uh, four cases. And I'm going to try and highlight some of the uh, newer issues, uh, newer discoveries in dermatomyositis in children around the, the, these four refractory cases. And hopefully you'll find um, some parallels with the kinds of patients that you're like looking after in your practice. Now, the first patient is uh, Ronald. I first met him about uh, 11 or 12 years ago. He was five years old at the time, a young Afro-Caribbean boy. And he was brought in because of severe weakness. His uh, parents, who were together at the time, um, kind of carried him into the office uh, in their arms. Um, he, he was completely dependent on them for bathing. They had to carry him up the stairs. He could walk, but he was really very weak. Even though he's a very dark-skinned boy, he clearly had facial swelling with some facial rash, a V sign, a red rash uh, um, in the anterior part of his chest. He had Gautrin's papules. The diagnosis uh, really wasn't um, in doubt. And so what we did is we started him on the kinds of therapies that we would normally use for a patient like this. This is a time course here. What I'm showing you on the vertical axis, the C mass, is the childhood myositis assessment scale. It's a, a measure that looks at uh, function, uh, muscle function and endurance, and it goes from zero, which is basically you can't move at all, all the way up to 52, which means that you can perform all the maneuvers as part of the CMAS normally. You don't necessarily have to be fully strong, but at least you're pretty close when you're 52. And you can see he came in, his CMAS was 13. He was quite weak. Because of his weakness, we gave him a pulse uh, with intravenous methylprednisolone three days at 30 milligrams per kilogram. That's kind of the equivalent of a gram per dose. And started him on prednisone and methotrexate, our usual therapies. Because he was so weak, I normally treat these patients as outpatients, but because he was so weak, we admitted him to hospital, he was there for two weeks, and then we sent him as an inpatient to our children's rehabilitation center down the street. And in September, he was no better. October, no better. The team over there was getting quite frantic. They were doing therapy for him every day, they were giving him his medications, and he wasn't making any improvement whatsoever. And I said, patients. Just be patient. It takes a while for these kids to get better. By November, they talked me into starting him on uh, regular intravenous immunoglobulin, and hopefully it did some good. But December, no change. Uh, January, no change. And I was still telling the team, patience. Just be patient. He'll get better. And of course, I was sweating and uh, really very worried about this. But in fact, I was right, he did get better. And uh, by February, he was discharged uh, to an outpatient. And now as uh, an older teenager, he's playing basketball, he was a track star. Um, he still has chronic disease, he's still on treatment, but he did very well. Now, was my message of patience warranted? Was that a reasonable thing to suggest to the team? What I'm showing you here is data that comes from our cohort at SickKids. This is uh, 84 patients. And if we look at the course of illness, the second pie graph shows those patients taken out who weren't followed long enough to really know what the long-term course was going to be. We can see that about a third of the kids, 